Hey guys, Matt here, bringing you another deck spotlight. Do you like depressing fairy tales? Do you miss Grimm? Then boy, do I have the deck for you today. Uh, the Little Match Girl has been a card that our team saw and just absolutely loved, and we were having a really hard time finding the right deck for it. Um, and I really wish Chris was doing this video because he is our resident green Grimm player. Uh, and if you look at this shell, you can tell that it's very, very close to probably what he would be playing or what a green Grimm deck would look like these days. Um, Match Girl. Uh, it's just an insanely strong card, and I even overlooked the fact that it, it can hit J-Rulers. Um, so I've killed a Valentina 2.0 with this, I've killed a Bahama with this, I've killed a Sylvia with this. There's been some really interesting things that have happened in testing that really, at first glance, you won't recognize the power level of this card, but once X equals 4 on her Awakening and you dig out 4 matchsticks from your deck and just blow up their entire board, uh, it feels very, very good. So we're just doing a traditional Green Grim package. Uh, you'll notice we'll slather a Rapunzel combo, which I'll go over, but the main center of this de deck is definitely Match Stick Girl, uh, sorry, the Little Match Girl, and how insanely good she can be in the right deck. So uh, we'll talk about Grim, we'll get into the stone base, and then we'll talk about the cards individually. So up first we have Grim, the Fairy Tale Prince. Uh, this is a card that everyone has loved since CMF, and it's one that I think got a lot of people into Force Will. I know uh, when it came out, that's one of the things that we were really excited for is that you can play all these fairy tales in the deck, and it doesn't matter what attribute you tap, what or what will, that it can. He has an ability that says you can pay whatever will you want for their costs. Um, on a quick note, that does not count Awakening. However, Magic Girl's Awakening is uh, colorless or void, so you can tap any will, anyways. Um, one of the interesting facts is the only other. Uh, ruler that's currently legal in Grim Cluster and Alice Cluster that doesn't have a backside, so it's you're calling a stone every single turn, so he wants to be in decks that can really utilize uh, having stones every single turn. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing if we're going to get more X based spells or cards or effects that Grim could really, really easily abuse. Uh, and then his other part, which you know, this deck's a little bit light on fairy tales, but if you can pay one discard a fairy tale, you get to search your deck for any other fairy tale and add it to your hand. This is a very strong effect, that's why I can only be used once per turn. But sometimes you just want to uh, dig out that match girl, sometimes you just want another Cheshire. Uh, it's definitely good for a lot of different utility plays in this deck, which is one of the reasons that I really enjoy this as a control player early on. Uh, going into our stone base, uh, we changed a few things, and I mentioned in the Facebook group that this is our updated but untested uh, list. So this stone deck is going to look a little bit weird, and I will be the first to admit that it is. Uh, so one of Feasting the Holy Windstone, it's just a great card to have in any green base deck. Yes, Gretel will not hit it, as in Gretel cannot not put it into play before I get a million judge rulings about that, but being able to protect your own resonators against their removal spells is very, very important to do, uh, and it can combo very, very well with Rapunzel and setting up an OTK. Up next we have three Gusting Skies, uh, just a Wind Lightstone. This is for our Realm of Pure Spirits. Uh, maybe out of the sideboard you want to do the Holy Wolf, uh, if you're afraid of that card, uh, any kind of addition removal, uh, anything like that. So the Light really usually has the strongest of sideboard options, so I really do like having this in the deck. And again, it is also for Realm Pure Spirits. Uh, three Deep Wood. This is for our Hera's main deck. Uh, there's probably going to be a fourth one sideboard. Uh, Send Back has been a very interesting card for us as well, if you want to just recycle your own Match Girl. Um, it's something that's been... Very, very good overall. And then three of Blasting Waves. Uh, traditional green redstone. Good for Rapid Decays out of the sideboard. It's to hard cast the match, magic match sticks if we have to in our deck for any reason. If we want to give one of our guys Swiftness like Rapunzel. Uh, it does a lot for the deck. So you'll notice that our stones are split three, three, and one. Um, once we get some more testing in, we might change those numbers. I'm almost certain that we will. But didn't have any time to right now, so that's where they're currently at. Uh, going into our zero drops, we have our first Regalia, uh, Horn of Sacred Beasts. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to play this in every Grim deck, uh, or ever, every con green base control the deck going forward, just simply being able to shuffle your graveyard in and recycle your Zeke's, your Absolute Cake Zones, your Keen Senses. Um, especially in Grim, when you can tutor for some of these cards again, it's a very, very strong effect to have. Uh, speaking of Magic Girl and how strong she can be in killing J Rulers, uh, we have two Death Scythes. Uh, the other strength in this is that you can clear cards out of your graveyard before you shuffle in the horn. So then you're drawing, you're not drawing your pre-slate game, you're not drawing the Gretels unless you want them for a tutor target, so that's kind of a more gray area one. Uh, it's definitely something that you can play 
play around with and figure out what cards you want to exile and which cards you uh, don't want to remove from game. Uh, Grim is best at having tutor tutoring targets or techie choices. So Grim Avenger, again, has been a staple and with how frequent Yogg is, uh, at least locally. I don't, you know, I'm not sure anyone else has seen those black-red incarnation decks of their uh, locals, but Grim being able to just remove Yogg from the game, or even remove a Dark Arthur from the game, uh, can really help out a lot. So that's kind of one, you know, one in the main deck and probably two to th uh, two more in the sideboard. Uh, one of the MV absolute MVPs of the deck is Realm of Pure Spirits. Uh, this is for your Rapunzel, so you, they cannot kill your Rapunzel unless this card's removed. This is for your Matchstick Girl when you want to leave it in the field so you can discard the Matchsticks. Uh, the card has a lot of utility for in this deck, and, or more of protection, I say, than utility. Poor phrasing there, excuse me, but uh, definitely an absolute must as a 2 of in the deck as well. Going into some of our counter spells, uh, we have three Zeeks. Uh, another card that just does just does everything. Counters a spell, buffs your team, makes something untargetable. Also can make their guys untargetable if they want to go for a big spell or addition. Um, it just does so much uh, in this deck. And again, in a pinch you can shuffle up your deck uh, as well. Then we have three absolute cake zones. Uh, you get to draw a card with Gretel. It's just good for countering splits or good at countering against, uh, let's say there's a problematic regalia that's about to resolve. You know, obviously paying something where they get it for free is not really great value, but in a pinch it does work. Um, so sorry about that, I skipped the one drops for whatever reason, they are shuffled in here. Uh, so now we'll be getting into the one drops. Uh, Magic Matchstick. Uh, can give a re Resonator Swiftness in first strike. Uh, you can also banish it to give some or deal 200 damage. Um, an important note about this card is there is a priority sequence between the first strike damage and normal strike damage. So you can do first strike damage, battle this, and kill something uh, before they have a chance to really respond to it. So that's another thing that Matchstick has a lot of value that not a lot of people know about. So that's another tricky way you can sneak in that extra 200 points of damage and not have to worry about uh, getting hit on the backswing or anything like that. Up next we have four Elvish Priests. Uh, these are basically just a staple in every grim, green grim deck ever. Uh, on your turn one, it allows you to pass in their turn, tap it, and pitch a fairy tale to tutor up for another one. Or it's just a great accelerant, so you can do uh, turn one priest, turn two Gretel, and then still have two will up, uh, assuming Gretel hits something uh, for either a Zeke, a Cake Zone, you know, whatever you need it to be. Or if you just want to play Realm of Pure Spirits on that turn and you get lucky. Uh, after that, we have four Cheshire Cats. Um, not much needs to be said about this card. Uh, can't be targeted. It helps you filter out your hand. It gives you a free shuffle when you need it. If they, if you block with it, uh, the card does a lot for the deck, but about, mostly the draw power is really what's great about Cheshire Cat. And the fact that you can tutor it in Grim decks makes it just absolutely insane. Uh, going into more draw power, uh, and this is one of the things that we updated recently, and, you know, I think might even bring the fourth one main, we don't know yet, um, is three Hera's. Uh, with all the regalia that's floating around, it's basically just a 5-5 body um, that draws you a card, but also adds a body on the field for Rapunzel, so you can really set up that OTK. So, uh, depending on how many, you know, how many regalia-based decks you're seeing in your locals, definitely go up to the full suit of four in your more mid-rangey and or control-based decks. Um, a card I cannot wait to get a promo of, um, that hopefully we'll see soon in our shop is Gretel. Um, pretty much Elvish Priest Gretel has been the staple of green based decks uh, for as long as I can remember. Um, there's been a few decks that uh, did not play them and say for like a win fam uh, familiar of holy win, so you get to draw instead on the turn one, and then you can do like the deal 300 damage on the next turn, so they've been doing more plays like that. But uh, we need Gretel in this deck because we really do want to ramp into the little match girl as quickly as possible to get as much value as possible out of the awakening effect. So going on to the little match girl herself, the true MVP of this deck, the true MVP of, I mean, a lot of things really. This, this card's absolutely insane. Um, it's a card that I was excited about, but I didn't really know how good it was until I was testing with it. And when you're hitting three or four magic matchsticks out of your deck, um, and then just wreaking havoc on your opponent's board, it's great. Um, even more so, post-reflect nerf, this actually gets 
even more value and even more powerful in the meta. Um, although I will say the one deck that this uh, deck doesn't want to see is a Vlad deck um, that has additional removal main. So that's something I'll go into in a little bit more uh, once I finish the last couple cards here. Uh, for three drops, we have three Snow Whites. Um, this is basically just another fairy tale for the deck, but also it allows you to play them more mid game because the passion counters, if they get out of hand, can really just win you a game on their own and keep your opponent off any kind of board presence. So um, this is a card that we've been excited about. You know, essentially 800 damage uh, with haste and swinging into something uh, will mo more often than not in those early turns kill what you needed to kill and not have to worry about it. And then lastly, for our, uh, other techie choices. Uh, one of Etna, uh, having this in the deck with Realm of Pure Spirits allows you to just lock down their entire board and then she's protected by Realm of Pure Spirits so you can just swing in a couple turns and win the game that way. You know, obviously you don't want to attack with Etna herself because then it opens up to removal or something of that nature but as long as you have Realm of Pure Spirits up and have this in play you can make some very frustrating turns for your opponent. So lastly we have Rapunzel herself. So this is the main win con in the deck um, and obviously a reason for maybe running two of them but this is also the Vlad killer is a I've affectionately called it um, when Vlad came out when the more control decks were popping up a little bit I was pretty much just winning off the back of Rapunzel and being able to have Roll Pure Spirits Rapunzel and OTK them out of nowhere you know they had they try to do Dark Pulse they try to do all these things but it's very very easy to play around those, those uh, spells with counter spells and set up a board where you're not playing a more all-in strategy and really burning yourself out on resources. So in, it takes a lot more setup to make this combo happen, but it's also a lot more rewarding um, once it actually goes off. So for those that don't know about the combo itself is with Realm of Pure Spirits, if you have another Resonator on the field, obviously you want to do this when you have multiple, you attack with Rapunzel, they try to use a removal spell, use her untap effect so then when they try to resolve the say storing to death it's no longer a legal target it fizzles and you're still attacking then you just do it again they have another removal spell tap it you're still attacking things of things of that nature so it's it's very very strong and hard to get around if people are not uh, prepared for it uh, but then mostly that your utility of the deck and also just again MVP does not get enough credit right now uh, is a little match girl and again, with just four of these magic sticks in the deck, um, not only does the magic stick grow, go great with Rapunzel to give her swiftness and really give you that OTK out anywhere, being able to discard them for your hand and deal 400 damage has just been absolutely great. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, we're still working on the sideboard. I know some people are probably wondering, you know, well, what else would you put in the sideboard? Uh, we put in the last Hera. We have things like Exceed. You know, I probably want to put another Rapunzel if I'm expecting a very grindy match. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I said earlier, more Grims, more things of that nature. Uh, Grim Avenger, that is. So, uh, this deck's an absolute blast to play. I very strongly recommend it if you're looking for a change. Everybody was asking for something that's not Reflect, so finally got it out for you guys. Going to have the Valentina 2.0 deck probably up next, if not uh, a Vlad Control deck, since that's going to be something that everyone's going to be talking about soon, so... If you like the video, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like the video as well. That helps out our channel a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. We're going to be doing the next uh, giveaway at 5,000 subscribers. Uh, and with the way things are going, that's probably going to be as short as a month probably. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope you'll give us a try your locals. And we'll catch you on the next Force of Will deck spotlight. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, make sure to hit subscribe or check out one of our other video series. And don't forget to stop by the Forceville US website for articles, a helpful database, and more.